Okay, it'll it'll get louder as I as I progress. Um, a few weeks ago, when Larissa was here, you'll um, if, for those of you who were there, um, I I wrote my own land acknowledgement and welcome. So I will read those again. Um, so standing on Treaty Six territory, we recognize and acknowledge that this land on which we stand has been gathering a gathering the gathering place for millennia of many indigenous peoples as treaty people we acknowledge honor and respect the history wisdom knowledge languages ceremonies and culture of the first nations of this continent of the metis people of the inuit of all who gathered in this place miskwichi we learn from the first peoples of our connection to the land of our responsibility to protect and respect Mother Earth. We honor and respect and mourn the ancestors and children buried here, the missing and murdered indigenous men and women. We acknowledge our need for collective healing. We remember that we are all treaty people and that we are all responsible for each other. Westwood is a welcoming space where we strive to embrace who and what we are regardless of belief or how ourselves we currently conceive. Westwood is a challenging place where we individually and collectively trace a path that struggles to find truth. Westwood welcomes our elders, middles, muddles, and youths and a rainbow of peoples and beliefs. Theists, non-theists, atheists, paganists, agnostics, gnostics, cynics, and eccentrics. Westwood welcomes people regardless of race, color, class, creed, or breed, gender, ethnicity, unicity, or elasticity. Westwood welcomes how you conceive your growing identity on the continuum of discovery. Whichever pronouns you choose to use today or tomorrow, or the direction of your affections, or your color in the rainbow. And with that, we're gonna, the first hymn, that we're going to sing and we always say stand if you're willing and able and i always you know have you ever wondered why they always say to stand it's because the people who put these songbooks together they don't write they don't ever pitch the song in the key of seat <laughs> <laughs> they always make you have to hit a little bit higher and the only way to hit it is if you're bloody standing so Stand if you are willing and able.
One of my favorite things of the Unitarians is the lighting of candles, where people, where you reconnect with people and you can share your concerns and you, the little joys that we have in life. Um, so I would invite anyone who has a candle of concern or a celebration. I'll, I'll, uh, this is a candle of celebration. Actually, it's a bit of a, a preamble to the introduction for Emily. A number of years ago, I was on a hiring committee and we hired Emily. And she's been an awesome hire and uh, in, in every way. And uh, so this is a candle of celebration that uh, we get to, you get to experience Emily, who I will describe later as a force of nature. <laughs> um, any any others? Then I will light one more for all of those unspoken celebrations and, and concerns. Please, please join the affirmation. May the light of these candles inspire us to use our power. And with that, guess what? Another invitation to stand if you're willing and able <laughs> and join us. I could do an academic, uh, really boring introduction to Emily, uh, which uh, I, I've been to talks where the person introducing the person who's introducing the person speaking, they, they go in sequence to introduce all of their things. We're not going to do that. Um, Emily is, uh, is like, as I said, a force of nature. She is 
indefatigable. Um, she's constantly has new projects and new things on the go. Um, um, she gets, she makes people tired just watching her. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, but one of the, the neat things that she, she has brought to Grant McEwen, she really, uh, she's, not a, she's not a good teacher. She is a transformational teacher. Um, what she does with her students is um, she ignites them so that they become change makers. They, they, they don't just learn, they go and do, and they, they, they change things. And uh, so that's one of the things that she's going to be talking about is, is that to share her experiences in um, getting people out there in the world. Um, at, at Grant McEwen, uh, there's, um, they don't say, say it very often, but Grant McEwen, the man, actually had a creed for himself that he wrote down. And at the very end of it, he said uh, that we should leave the vineyard better than we found it. And Emily kind of embodies that uh, in many ways. So with that, I would invite Emily. Yes. She's not good at listening to instructions either. <laughs> this is true. Um, so I do have a, a slide presentation, and I have lovely friends in the back. Thank you. Um, so I'll just wave for changing the slide, if that's okay. Um, okay, so uh, thank you, uh, everybody, for having me. Uh, thank you, Rob, uh, for inviting me here today. Um, so uh, when uh, Rob invited me uh, to come to this, we were, he invited me to his farm. I have a, a little boy, he's two and a half now, um, and he uh, loves, um, uh, you know, old MacDonald had a farm, these songs, and he loves horses and all these things. So um, Rob was smart to <laughs> invite me to come look at the horses and then say, oh, let's talk about this. So um, it was actually a wonderful conversation and um, I was very inspired to come. I was honored by the invitation. Uh, and so when I thought about what I could say, um, um, you know, I, I spent a long time, there's many things I could talk about. Um, I think that um, all the things I do are interesting because I'm doing them. Uh, I'm biased, I guess, that way. Um, I think all my projects are very exciting. Um, and so uh, I'm involved in many things. And so I, I really thought, though, what would be a helpful thing to talk about here um, and something that might be useful. So I'm hoping that what I'm sharing here today is useful in some way. Um, but uh, Rob helped me with the title. Mine was much more boring than this. Uh, and so we can thank uh, Rob for the much more exciting title than the one I had. Uh, so thank you so much again for having me. Great, thank you. Um, so uh, I wanted to uh, share a thought with you today that is kind of this overarching theme, this overall idea uh, that I wanted to share that uh, my, my, my presentation, my, my chat with you today is about, um, is anchored to. And so uh, I work with an elder very closely. She's an amazing, wonderful woman. And she says uh, really amazing things to me often. Uh, and she doesn't realize, I chatted with her when I was getting ready for this. Um, and, I, and, I, and I shared that this is what I wanted to chat about. Um, and it was actually, even that was an interesting conversation because she said that she doesn't realize all the things she says to me and how sometimes they, they do, well, often, they do really resonate with me and stick with me. Um, and I often keep coming back to these ideas that she shares with me. And one of them, um, was uh, that our actions have ripple effects. Um, and we work on projects, we sit together on many things. Um, I find that uh, I do better when someone's telling me what to do all the time. And so uh, it's easier for me to follow along. I find that that's uh, really helpful for me to have that guidance and support with the projects we do together. Um, and so actions uh, have a rippling effect. Uh, that was something that really resonated with me um, and something I've spent a lot of time thinking about. Um, and so I thought that again, that that would be something I would share today as kind of this overarching idea uh, to frame uh, my, my conversation today with you. Because sometimes we see our actions as happening in a vacuum um, and only involving us uh, and our needs. And we get caught up in our own lives and our own world without uh, considering uh, how we are impacting others. Uh, I know sometimes I'm guilty of that too, um, thinking mostly about, or sometimes about the things that I'm doing without necessarily considering the broader impact of things. Um, and I would invite, uh, you know, I'm, I'm trying to do that more. Um, and I, again, wanted to share that. Because um, we consider that there's a ripple effect 
resulting from our actions, we may be more inclined um, to create spaces for reflection, to be thoughtful, um, act with purpose, and perhaps be more respectful and compassionate and more forward thinking. Um, and so like a pebble dropped uh, into the water causing ripples, our individual words and actions do impact uh, those around us who in turn uh, impact individuals uh, who come in contact with them and so on. And so uh, this idea of this uh, ripple effect that actions have ripple effects, I wanted to share with you um, a little bit about uh, my journey and how I came here um, and uh, about some of my projects and how they connect with that, because it's something that um, I'm, you know, think a lot about. Um, and again, is this uh, kind of anchor that uh, I've, I've connected to with kind of how I go about doing the work that I do um, and how I'm, I'm, you know, the direction I'm going with my life as well. Thank you. So about me. Um, so I'll tell you a little bit about me. Um, and so I am a faculty member at McEwen University. Um, I'm a community engaged researcher. Um, and so what that means is that, uh, and also a teacher. Um, so what McEwen, the things we do as faculty is we have service, research and teaching, and all those things I do uh, are community engaged. Um, so I work with community partners to create the things I do with my classes. So all my students are working with Norwood right now. All my students last, you know, last term were working with the neighborhood empowerment team to investigate ID issues and barriers to access um, to try to have that meaningful change in the community. Um, so I do try my best to inspire them with my jazz hands and my stories and the things I make them read. And then I bring them with me in the community and we try to uh, do work that's meaningful. Um, but in terms of the, and so that's what I do in my classes. Um, and then in the work that I do in terms of the, the projects that I do, again, they're all community engaged. Um, so uh, that means, you know, working with community partners to co-create solutions to social issues. Um, and again, walking with community partners um, in that journey. And the work that I, I do primarily is with schools and school divisions, because I do fundamentally believe in the education system. Um, I believe that there are some challenges with it, sometimes some problems with the education system, but I believe that it can be better and I wanna be part of that process of making it better. And so that's my goal. Um, and so this is who I am now, but not who I've always been. Um, and so I thought that giving a bit of background about myself might uh, help kind of shape and, and uh, give some context for the projects I'll be chatting about. Um, so me personally, um, I find that the place I'm in right now is very much shaped by where I've come from. And so again, that journey I thought might be helpful to share. So uh, when I was growing up, um, I grew up, um, you know, a single parent household, uh, that parent was unemployed and we had five kids. I was one of them. Um, even in my university, uh, my university career, I was uh, supporting our family. Um, and so growing up, we didn't have much of anything. Um, there were a lot of mental health issues um, and uh, that meant that our home environment was not often a very positive or a very healthy place. Um, and I knew that I was on a very kind of dark and destructive path uh, as I was growing up. Um, and I was really aware of this. Um, and I'm not unique. Many people, most people, all people have challenges and struggles in their lives. Um, and so I know that my experience is not unique. Um, you know, many people, as I mentioned, have struggles and challenges that they do go through. Um, but I'm bringing this up to provide some context again about where I'm coming from. Uh, and so, uh, you know, more about that as I really struggled with schooling, I say that I do believe in the education system, um, but I really did struggle within the education system. Um, and so, uh, for example, I couldn't read till I was in high school and I really struggled a lot um, and people would kind of just pass me along into the different grades uh, without really questioning or wondering kind of what was going on with me in the background or you know the broader things happening with me um, but I always found myself in those lower ability classes and streams um, and again was kind of passed along um, and I never thought that university was a place for me I never thought I would go there I'd never been on a university campus um, it was never something I thought was for me um, and I finished high school having only taken in these workplace courses. Um, so, you know, in my day where I'm from, it was called uh, university, college and workplace courses. Um, so I took those uh, and here in Alberta, it's like dash three, dash four, the K&E stream. Um, so those paths of courses that don't lead to university, those are the ones that I was in. Um, but I did decide, uh, um, you know, that I, I needed to go to university because I wanted a different path for myself and for the family that I one day wanted to have that I, and again, I have a son now, I have a family now. Um, and so uh, I wanted to go to university. For some reason, I didn't know anything about university. I'd never been there, but I had my thought in my head that that's if I wanted to be successful, that's where I had to be. Um, so I, I finished 
high school uh, without the option of going to university. So I spent many years upgrading, trying to figure out my path of how to get there. Um, and eventually I did find myself at uh, university and I was enrolled in my undergraduate studies and the same students that I work with now, I see myself in them. And that's why I do take the approach to my students that I do. Um, and so when I was in my undergrad, I felt very lost and I was confused. I was felt like I was fumbling around without direction or purpose. Um, but then I met somebody. And again, this relates to why I believe in the education system. Um, I met a professor, her name was Dr. Janice Arini. And uh, I was taking a class with her and I was just one of many people in the room where I was from, there's like 500 people in classes, right? So the university I went uh, to school in my undergrad um, and she, um, uh, had uh, she posted for the class a research assistant opportunity um, and so for some reason she picked me but uh, I always thought that but I realized I was the only one who applied and that's why she picked me um, so thank you uh, so I appreciate that I'm glad no one else applied for that but I did um, and that's why she picked me so I appreciate that um, and so uh, during my time working with her, um, so she did, she, she picked me, right? Because I was the only one, but she picked me. Um, but then at the time I didn't realize, I was like, oh, I'm picked, right, I'm special. Um, and so then I really had to prove myself. And so I spent all this time working as hard as I possibly could because I didn't want to let her down. I wanted to prove I was worthy of this opportunity. Um, I worked harder than I'd ever worked um, and I wanted to show, but I was also showing myself that I could do these things. Um, and so she took me under her wing, uh, but most importantly, um, I found in our journey working together because I kept pushing myself and I kept taking on things and I kept working harder than I'd ever worked before um, and doing things I never thought I would do. Um, but most importantly, in our journey of working together, um, she believed in me and I knew she believed in me and she saw value in me. And through that process, I started seeing value in me and I believed in me. And that was a huge um, life-changing experience for myself. Um, I know it maybe sounds kind of silly uh, saying it now, um, but I didn't believe in myself at that time, and I didn't see that I had value at that time, and it was a huge moment for me. And again, that's why when I work with my students, I want to take them, I want to show them, I help everyone understand, and I want them to see that they have value and that I believe in them. I tell them all that. I always say things like, you may not care about me, but I care about you, haha, -ha. right, you're in my class, I know where you are, I'll see you in the hallway, um, you know, things like that. Uh, I take them with me, and I, I, I take them with me on this journey, um, and I really noticed, actually, with all my classes, because I have high expectations for them. Um, and even when they come into my classes, we have these great projects with community partners and you have to leave the classroom and you have to engage with others and you have to do all these things that, you know, write professional emails that aren't like a text message, right, with certain characters or whatever, right? You have to actually have to do these things and leave um, and get out in the community. Um, and students are often scared and not sure that they can do it. And I always tell them that it's going to be the greatest project and that there I'm so proud of them and the work that they're doing. And every single time, actually, what happens is everybody far exceeds everything that they could do or they thought that they could do every single time I've noticed and the students that come in are different than the students that leave um, and I take a lot of value in that I really believe in that process and so I tell them you know how great they're going to do and I'm so proud of this wonderful class and every time they they meet the expectations and exceed them um, which is amazing uh, but my this person who came into my life at this very meaningful time really did put me on a path um, that really did change my life so her actions and words did uh, did change the trajectory in my life. And now my current position as a faculty member, I'm trying to make a positive impact in the lives of others and make a positive contribution in the community because I believe that that's my purpose and what I'm supposed to be doing. Um, and so now I'm here. Um, but I do know where I'm from. I do know where uh, I've, I've come from um, and I know where I am now. And I take that very seriously. Um, though my work is informed by a social responsibility and a desire to contribute in a meaningful way. Um, I'm working to empower others to see the value that they have and define their voice. Um, and so because someone did that for me. And so now I see that it's my job to, to support that with others. Um, so I have two projects that I'll share with you today. I have so many things I could have chosen to chat about, but I did want to share two projects with you. Um, I could go on and on for hours and hours and hours, so it was helpful that Rob gave me a certain amount of time to talk with you about. Um, so actually, because I have more to say than the 10 minutes I was given, which I may already have gone over it, I'm not really sure I should have timed it. Um, I should know myself better than that, but I do have a lot of reports I brought. 10 minutes left. 10 minutes in total? Oh, okay. Oh, no, I, I, I gave her 10 minutes knowing she'd go to 20. Yeah, that's... <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right, I'm just going to go with it. There you go. Um, and if there's things I didn't say, um, I'm actually... Uh, so I do write academic things in academic journals that no one has access to. Hopefully someone reads them at some point. Um, 
So maybe someone has, I'm not sure. Um, but I take a lot of value in writing reports for community partners. Um, and so I have a lot of reports at the back of the class or back of the class, back of the room. Um, and uh, so I put a bunch at the back there if anyone's interested in learning more about the projects I'm sharing with you today and other projects I've done. Uh, but all my work is around, um, all of the things I do is around supporting, uh, creating uh, meaningful spaces for people to come together and share their voices. That's what I do. So with all the projects I, I work with others, I'm uh, all my projects, I see it like a pie, maybe because I'm I don't know, thinking about lunchtime, I'm not sure. Could have talked about pizza, I guess, but the pie where like I'm one little piece in all these projects um, and all the other people come together at the table, we sit together and we create these things. So I'm one little piece of them, um, but uh, I've been involved in many beautiful projects. And so I have other reports at the back if you'd like to learn more about these things I've been involved in. Um, I'd like to tell you about this one, uh, one of these projects now um, that relate to this broader idea of the ripple effects of actions and words and how I really do take that uh, with me um, in the work that I do and it shapes the work that I do. Um, so talking about uh, how this connects to my work, I'll again talk about uh, this first project, uh, this photo voice project. Um, and so I wanted to give a little bit of background. Um, so how I got involved in this project and again, gives me some context of the other work I've been involved in. But I moved here in 2016. I didn't know one person in the whole province. I didn't know anybody, um, which was actually really helpful because I didn't have someone to go to or to lean on. I just did what I felt in my heart was the right thing to do. Um, and so I wanted to do my projects that were embedded in, um, you know, in the community. And so I just started volunteering. So um, I had the benefit of my service broadly defined, I decided um, that I was just going to spend my time in the community listening and learning and building those relationships. And so I volunteered for so many hours, um, thousands of hours, just working in schools, making connections, just being a friend, cooking, cleaning, I've done childcare, all these things, scrubbing those lasagna pans, schools love serving lasagna, um, you know, all these things. So I did that uh, for a really long time. Um, just to understand, to situate myself, to immerse myself, to just kind of get a sense of what was happening um, and how I could contribute in a meaningful way um, versus coming in with these ideas already. I wanted that to come from the work I was doing. So over time, I built authentic relationships, um, again, just listening and learning and spending time. Uh, so I listened and worked with elders and uh, with school staff members and knowledge keepers and just, you know, families with students, just listening and learn, uh, listening and learning. And so my projects have emerged naturally from those relationships. So, for example, uh, learning about some of the needs and challenges that schools were having, that students, that families were having, um, and then being invited to collaborate and to be, work in partnership on these projects um, that aim to address those challenges. So that's where my projects, all the projects I'm here, uh, all the projects I've done are based in that. Um, so related to this photo voice project, uh, I started, I think in 2017, um, just volunteering at the school and I'd volunteer one day every week, um, just doing stuff, helping out, just building relationships. That was my goal. Um, was, and so I started making those connections, um, but I ended up volunteering in a classroom um, where they were making lanyards. And so I was uh, just working in there, helping um, the best that I could, um, just really making connections with these kids. Um, and so there was one student in there who I could see, um, you know, was was kind of having a bit of a hard time and wasn't sitting with the other kids and wasn't chatting a lot. And, and I could see in his face and how he was, um, that he was having some challenges. And so I sat with him a lot and we chatted and we talked, um, we worked together, um, you know, over several weeks working on his lanyard. And as we worked together, I would chat with him and we'd talk about things and what was going on with him. Um, and I encouraged him and I said that when we finished that he could put this lanyard on and you know walk around the class, uh, that side of the classroom um, with this lanyard on um, because I loved what he was creating and I was proud of the work that he was doing. Um, and one day he did finish this lanyard um, and he remembered what I had said weeks earlier and he put it on and he walked around the outside of the class and he had his, hel his head held up high and he had his shoulders going back and forth like this strut that I hadn't seen. Um, and he was proud. Um, and I could tell with his big smile that he felt good about himself. Um, and so later on that day, I was doing something else and uh, I was in the, I saw, you know, I was in the hallways and I saw all the children, if you're in schools, you see how at certain times all the children run from the rooms of their other rooms and find their, you know, find the next classroom as they're making their way. Um, and I saw that same boy walking through the hall. Um, you know, he didn't see me, I was somewhere else, but I just saw him and he was making his way through this crowd of people and he had his head held high and he was walking with his shoulders going like this and he was just so proud of himself still wearing that lanyard with this big smile. Um, and I was so emotional about that. Um, 
I'm actually a very emotional person, um, but I cried. Like I was so impacted by what I had seen um, and that I could be part of that in some way. Um, and so his boy was so confident, so proud of himself and walking this way in class or, or you know, in the school. And I knew at that moment that those are the things I wanted to be part of. That was meaningful for me, that I wanted to be part of, of people feeling empowered, people feeling good about themselves. I wanted to be some, I wanted to be connected to that. That's what I wanted to contribute to. Um, and so, uh, you know, that people or people would feel empowered, heard and valued. That was my goal. That was going to be like, that was my purpose. The elder I, I mentioned earlier, um, she says many meaningful things to me. And one day she did ask me, what's your purpose? And I thought, oh, that's a big question. I'll have to think about that. That is my purpose. I know that now um, because I thought about it and I came back and I was able to share that I know what it is. Um, and I want to be part of that process for others. Um, and so uh, once I, I had this experience, I started uh, attending, I crashed the PTA meetings and I just join um, at the school and start talking about, okay, so what can I do here? I can volunteer in classes and I can scrub the lasagna pans and stuff, but what else can I do in a meaningful way? Um, and so working with the parent council, the parents started talking about how the kids liked photography, which led me to a discussion about photo voice. Um, and so, uh, which led me into jumping into learning about photography for the first time. So now I've learned about that. And I have been co-teaching a photo voice class every Thursday morning since 2020 with some kids. <laughs> and so I had to learn more about photography. I'm still not an expert. These kids teach me all the time. Um, and so this work is focused on empowering, um, engaging and empowering students as leaders and educator, uh, sorry, and education partners using uh, photo voice and focus groups. Um, and again, I have many reports in the back, but these are uh, three examples of these wonderful children that I work with. Um, and I realize this is very, very small for you. I realize the wording is very, very small for you. It's very small for me as well. Um, I was gonna get closer to see if I could read it, but hopefully I can read it from here. Um, so the, the top one on the top right, it says contrast. So, oh, here we go. Set free on stage, there you go. So this uh, first one up here, uh, it says contrast. So in photo voice, the kids, um, if you work with kids, uh, you know, if you go up and say, how are you feeling about things? What, what, what are your thoughts today about this? They look at you with this blank stare. But if you give them a camera and you say, go, uh, why don't you take some photos of things that are important to you? It's amazing the things that that opens. It's like an opening door. And then they go and take all these photos and you sit with them. Same way I sat with that, sat with that other boy. I sit with all these kids. We have 25 kids enrolled already. We are already meeting every Thursday. Um, and for this term right now, uh, but this was uh, other reports we did. And so this person, um, it says contrast is the title. So they take a photo um, and then they write a title and a caption that explains kind of what this photo was about. Um, and so this one says contrast and the is the title and the um, caption says in life we must be brave sometimes in the dark but always in the light. Um, I just, you know, kids are so, um, they know so much. They know so much. And as soon as you start giving people a platform to share their voice, it is amazing. Um, and so this other one here, um, it's called the passage. This represents a, a path of life to me. It could be scary and dark, but you have to keep going and walking. When you get to an age, it gets hard, but you have to keep going uh, forward to get to the light at the end. We all have light at the end of our paths. We just have to reach it. Um, so that's this one. Um, and then this one here, the last example I'll share with you, um, so the title is the voices of nature uh, teach me lessons and the caption is the forest is full of life slow down honor and appreciate what you hear um and so uh that's uh what uh what these ones are I feel like I should take this out too, or else I'm not sure what will happen if I have too many things um so uh this was uh this project with them um, and so, uh, again, working to empower these students um, to, again, see that they, you know, provide an opportunity for them to share their voice in a meaningful way. And so we've created these beautiful reports where they take home and it's a professional report with these beautiful pictures that they have um, and they feel, um, you know, so happy about this work. Um, and it's actually been really meaningful for me to connect with these kids. Um, and, uh, you know, even throughout COVID with the different challenges that they've had, but for me to be able to try to be there in a meaningful way for them as well. Um, again, learning with them and walking with them in that journey of, again, sharing their voice in a meaningful way. Um, and so I have many reports at the back. If anyone's interested, please feel free to take them home um, and uh, see the beautiful words and the beautiful work that these kids have done. Um, and so I'll have uh, this other second project I want to share with you um, again today. Um, so uh, I 
take it very seriously again that I work at McEwen now in this place. Um, and so uh, I started uh, creating this program at McEwen. Um, and so it's called the McEwen CYU. We thought that was fancy. Um, and so it's a, instead of a big long title, uh, it's, so the McEwen CYU is the McEwen Children and Youth University. Um, and so we wanted to start this. And so I'm leading this work. I've been working on this for many, many years to get it off the ground, but working in collaboration with many others as well. Um, uh, across uh, many colleagues working on this. Um, and so uh, the goal of this work is to break down barriers for children and youth um, from diverse backgrounds to pursue a post-secondary education while introducing them to post-secondary learning opportunities offered at McEwen. So we don't have things like this at McEwen. Um, other universities can have different programs to invite people in this kind of uh, learning opportunity with kids. Um, and I didn't see something similar to this. And so I thought that was my job to do that. Um, so to do this goal, to have these goals, we're working to establish this McEwen CYU program um, that offers meaningful learning opportunities as well as effectively, we're hoping anyway, to effectively engage youth, uh, children and youth in the Edmonton community in ways that kind of respond to their needs and interests as well. And so this initiative aims to bridge the gap between McEwen University and children and youth uh, in the Edmonton community. And so we're learning um, from even another colleague of mine at another institution who's running a similar program. So seeing what he's done and how could we learn that, learn from that, but also how do we make that community-based um, and informed by uh, and with the, the partners that we're, we're working with to create this. So those connections to the community and based in that community context. Um, and so, uh, yeah, adapting things for that local Edmonton context for sure. Um, so we're currently in phase one of this project, uh, which involves piloting the McEwen CYU program on a small scale this academic year. Um, and so we're really hoping that doing this, working with a small group of, of children or youth, um, will provide this robust platform to launch the McEwen CYU on a larger scale um, while kind of investigating those promising practices um, by offering youth a series of university based engaging hands on workshops designed um, and delivered by our our, our team working with us at McEwen. And so this project aims to inspire youth to pursue a post-secondary education and really to plant that seed of opportunity. I never thought I'd go to university and here I am now. Um, and I really love the idea of just creating opportunities to welcome people in that you belong here too. Everybody's welcome. Come in, see what we're doing. We have gross things in jars and we have all these other things. There's, you know, all these things that I think are gross, but children love. Um, but beyond that, in our labs that we have, we have amazing people who are passionate um, and are coming together to create really exciting opportunities, which actually, interestingly enough, I had the goal of supporting people coming in, but it's actually really interesting seeing the professional development that comes out of that for faculty, because saying, you know, okay, so how are you gonna teach that concept, but in a way that's for junior high kids? You know, how are we going to do that? Which actually, that's really interesting because then people are taking that back to their own classrooms as well. Um, and so, uh, you know, inspiring, planting that seed of possibility. So this project's also, we're trying to examine perceived barriers to post-secondary, um, as well as kind of how those identified barriers can be addressed in a university setting. Um, so I want to be part of, now that I'm at McEwen, I want to drive open those doors at McEwen um, and welcome and include children and youth from the community to empower youth so that they can see that this is a place where they could belong to, um, that they belong here, that they're welcome here. I think that would have been, you know, for me, little Emily way back when would have been an incredibly useful opportunity to just be at a university, just walk in those doors and see that, yeah, I could be here too, you know, planting that seed of opportunity. I love that. I, I want to be part of that for others um, and opening those doors. And so this project will help us further understand how to create more equitable, inclusive and accessible post-secondary educational opportunities. And it's really growing. Um, like, I don't think so. We're working with one school right now in one um, classroom that's uh, signed up for this to work with us. Um, and now all of a sudden we're planning, um, we're making a greenhouse in the teacher's classroom and we're going to be doing an outside garden that we're going to transfer it in and the kids are making DNA necklaces and they're doing this goop that changes color with light and there's this liquid that's a solid and then it's a it's a liquid sometimes like all these things it's so exciting to be part of it it's not I'm not a science person that's not how my brain works but I'm just amazed. Um, and we're doing these things together where I'm learning just like they are right I bring the jazz hands and the excitement, um, you know, and then we have these wonderful professors who are coming coming in to show us these really exciting things. So I'm really excited to be part of that. Um, so 
Next slide there. So um, I just wanted to share these examples so you know where I'm coming from um, and throughout the work that I'm doing. I'm aware of my words and I'm aware of my actions and that they can have a ripple effect. Um, and I'm engaging in the work and the goals of trying to contribute in a meaningful way to empower others to see their value and to find their voice. Um, if anyone's interested, again, there's reports if you want to learn more about these projects, but I didn't want to get into academic -y stuff too much. I just wanted to share where I'm coming from and uh, with the, the reason and the meaning that I, I've come to these places and to work on these things. Um, so in closing, we may not be aware of how influential actions can be, um, but our actions, even small ones, can have a positive impact on the lives of others um, and within the broad, uh, broader community. And so I invite you to consider the ripple effect that you can create through spreading kindness and compassion. Yes. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, one of the things that that's exciting about what what Emily is doing is is that often when they do, there are programs like that at the university you get the most privileged students who attend them, you know, that, uh, uh, that they already have all the advantages and benefits and they get invited because of the top marks and blah, 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 the top schools and so on. And Emily's not doing that. <laughs> She's bringing the kids who don't feel, they, they're, they're blown away. Yeah. And, and that, that you see their eyes like, and, and it is exciting to see a kid at on campus thinking that I could be here and seeing themselves in that context. And, and you really do see that it's not about recruitment, it's about transformation. And that's what's really exciting. Okay, so with that, it's also Black History Month. And I, Emily shared her notes with me, so I kind of knew what, where, what direction she was going. And so, and I thought with Black History Month, this was a perfect song to sing. Um, and uh, it's, uh, da -da -dum. you respond. So, and it, again, you can you can stand up, but I've actually pitched it a little bit lower than <laughs> it's in the in the key of F in this book. It's like this way you can harmonize. You can just pick a note and it'll work. So you just follow. I'm on my way, I'm on my way. to freedom land. To freedom land. I'm on my way. To freedom land, I'm on my way to freedom land. And then we all sing together. I'm on my way, great God, I'm on my way. I'm on my way, great God, I'm on my way. Now you don't have to agree with me. If you if, when I say sister, you can say brother. And when I say brother, you can say sister. And then we can get four verses for the price of two. I asked my sister to come with me. I asked my sister to come with me. I asked my sister to come with me. I'm on my way, great God, I'm on my way. I asked my brother to come with me. I asked my brother to come with me. I asked my brother to come with me. I'm on my way. If they say no, I'll go anyhow. If they say no, I'll go anyhow. If they say no, I'll go anyhow. I'm on my way, great God, I'm on my way. I'm on my 
way And I won't turn back I'm on my way And I won't turn back that first verse again. I'm on my way to freedom land, to freedom land. I'm on my way to freedom land. I'm on my way to freedom land. I'm on my way. Great God. that we are closing <laughs> so thank you and there is a potluck um, uh, afterwards and and I forgot does anybody have any announcements <laughs> thank you <laughs> sorry <laughs> we have this great speakers reconciliation speakers series sorry we have this great reconciliation speakers series part one is next Sunday afternoon. If you go to the website, there's lots of information on the calendar, and there's also a banner in the scrolling part in the banner that you can just click through. It's free, but we would like you to reserve your spot. We hope to have uh, people here to greet our speakers, but you can also join us online via Zoom. And so uh, have a look at it. I believe there are posters around the building as well. So we hope to see you. Hmm? Dylan, Dylan, Dylan Reed. Reed, thank you. Dylan Reed is our first speaker who is a local filmmaker and has done a lot of work, uh, research into the biosphere, the Beaver Hills biosphere. He's done a lot of video work for them and he has been doing a historical, uh, video historical uh, remapping of Edmonton. And he's going to be talking about this neighborhood and who was here in the past and who are our ancestors who occupied this space before us. So it should be quite interesting. Hope to see you. And I'll finish with a, a little story that uh, Pete Seeger uh, used to say, because I always have to quote Pete Seeger. Um, and he talked about the uh, Sugar Spoon Brigade. And, you know, he said that, uh, you know, if you bring, if everybody brought in one tablespoon of sugar, it doesn't mean much. But if, uh, if you do that every day and over the course of a lifetime, that's a hell of a lot of sugar. And, uh, and, and that's the type of thing that, uh, that Emily is, is talking about, those, those little ripples that, uh, you know, the, the butterfly thing, the butterfly that causes the hurricane, except that's, well, I guess Emily's a bit of a hurricane. <laughs> <laughs> so with that, the postlude. Um.